Did you know that there's a mod for Project Zomboid that turns the most simple of encounters into a nightmare event that will have you running for your life? And the mod in question is the Hivemind mod, a simple change where instead of acting as individuals, zombies now behave as a collective threat where fighting one means fighting just about the entire town as they now share vision together. So today, I thought I'd give this mod a try to see how long I can survive against overwhelming odds. And in order to stop me from abusing fire and kiting, I also turned them into sprinters. My goal for this challenge is to fix up a boat and to leave the map through Knox County's river. Wish me luck. I will say, things look pretty calm right now, but I assure you, if I move outside and a single zombie sees me, I will be in a world of hurt. Because in this challenge, we are going to be playing with the hive mind. Anyways, welcome back to Project Zomboid. And today, our hero is... Robin Banks, the burglar who's underweight, stout, fit, organized, a gymnast, amateur mechanic, and a runner. And hopefully, we are going to be able to escape from Knox County in one piece. I'm gonna enable stealth mode, and we're gonna take it very slow, and we're gonna have to think up a plan. But before that, we're gonna do a small little look around the area to make sure there's no zombies nearby, because if one spots me, I am quite literally gonna have to move out of the entire place. But it looks like we're good, and because it's the only house I can loot, I'm hoping it has some good stuff. So we have ourselves a nice bucket hat, a, a metal saw already, pretty good. A couple of books, a few mugs, an empty kettle, a comic book, and lastly, we got ourselves a pencil and eraser. This is gonna be very good because I can actually mark down my entire plan. And yes, I need a strategy for this challenge because not only are the zombies gonna be sharing a hive mind, they also sprint. And already seeing a zombie out there terrifies me to my core. So let's move into the bathroom where it's a little bit more safe and I won't get spotted by anyone, so I can describe our plan. So, I am right here, sitting inside the bathroom in the middle of Moldraw. This is a very populated town, and the only way I am going to survive is to make it into the woods as fast as possible. The only problem is that we are quite literally in the middle, and there are gonna be a lot of zombies, which does complicate our escape plan quite a bit. And really, I can't go this way, can't go down south, can't go up north. The only way I can go, if it hits the fan, is down into the woods, and hopefully, I might be able to move my way up and into other areas. More importantly, the sections up here where there's little to no zombies. Uh, yeah, that's that's really it. So I guess we're gonna follow the rail line down But before I do just run away and start escalating the entire chase I will see if I can loot a few more homes around the area There are a couple of wandering zombies, but if we play it slow play it cool and play it like if I get spotted I will explode immediately. We should be all right and already um, that's a lot of zombies we're gonna hug the back of our little, oh my, there are so many here. This is worse than Minesweeper. Yeah, no, they're just, there's just zombies all over the damn place. We'll go take a little peek here. All right, I think I have a plan. I don't think I can make it, actually, I think I can make it over to that blue house there. I'm worried about the street up north because there's usually a zombie pack up there. So let's see if I can, no, wait, oh no. Oh no, it's already begun. As you see, every single zombie in the tri-state area now knows my location, which is not good when I need to survive. I need to conserve my, um, energy. I need to start hauling because every single zombie is going to want me dead. Yeah, no, this is not good. <laughs> we are very far from the tree line and the zombies are only joining in on the fun right now. Oh, please, Robin. Run like your life means it, dude! Oh, we're good. We're good. We're gonna run into the woods. We're never gonna talk about this again. All right, we have evasive maneuvers on our side, and soon we'll be in the middle of the woods. And thankfully, we got a fence right here to cut contact with most of them. I'm not gonna stop running, though. I will not stop running for a long time. <laughs> we're gonna run deep into the woods to make sure they don't see a single 
think. So yeah, welcome to the Hive Mind Challenge. I have no idea on how I'm gonna be able to get a boat in the future, but hey, we made it away with our life. The only problem is I, I, I am kind of terrified because if I, if I get spotted by a zombie in here, that means every single zombie within the area knows where I'm at. But I think we can take a small little chill pill here, sit down for a minute, get my exertion back up, and move on afterwards. Hey, we survived though, so that's pretty cool. I forgot to grab water though, which is kind of a problem. We'll figure that out later. Anyways, let's see how far we've made it. We have made it all the way here, out of the danger zone, into the woods. I would say we're gonna have to hook it up, bop, 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 over this way, cutting into the corner of this road here, moving up and down all the way to this small area here to where I can hopefully get my uh, bearings in a row, collect some firepower and weaponry. We're gonna sit down and I will see all of you in a small bit and then we're gonna do a big trek in the woods. At the very least, all of my green clothing helps me blend into the environment. <laughs> All right, I think we've gotten more than enough rest, so let's go move up. And while we are moving through these woods, I will have search mode enabled to maybe find some extra supplies along the way. Really crossing my fingers I don't come across a zombie in these damn woods, but I am a very fast shimmier. I shimmy so fast. All the way to Greater Horizons, finding some sage, Twigs, tree branches, some berries, even more berries, a stone, mushrooms, and finally we have made it to the road. I have found quite the few goodies along the way, including a bunch of berries, mushrooms, and uh, if you're wondering, I'm gonna drop these on the floor because if I were to eat a poisonous one, I would die unceremoniously. We are getting thirsty, which kind of creates a clock, at least for my survival. Uh, I really wish I had a sharp stone so I could make some spears and maybe some impromptu weapons. But now that we are on the road, all we have to do is follow it down this way, making it over to my new home. And it, it is a home. It is the home of all time, actually. The only thing I need to keep an eye out for are any roadside hordes or roadside crashes that might have zombies. Uh, any type of zombie interaction is going to have adverse effects on my survival. So I am going to have to play like a rat. Okay, Robin Banks is very much a rat character, but hopefully we can escape and maybe, if we're lucky enough, make a fortune along the way. Let's hope this trip stays pretty mundane. Ooh, and is that a chipped stone? Mm, that it is. All right, now that we have this, I can go ahead and make myself a nice spear. It's not much but it's a weapon in my hands. All right, now we're ready. But judging from what actually happened, it seems like my fear was not real. At least my, my suspicions for fear weren't real, as I have made it to the driveway of one of my favorite in-game locations in Project Zomboid. Right past this fence line, we will have the nice and very, very up-to-date uh, drug lab. That's a drug house, and that is a drug lab. The cool thing is that in the zombie apocalypse, the things you would find in one are extremely nice. Not that it really matters because I am really fiending for water right now. So please give me a filled up kettle of water. And finally, we can go see what's around this place. Oh, also, I picked up a few more tree branches, some more chipped stones, and a couple of other bits and bobs as well. And while we're at it, I'm actually going to make the mugs into throwable mugs so I can use those as a distraction in the future. But we have ourselves a hammer, which is perfect. We, we also have a saw from our first home. We have a tote bag, which is a perfect, uh, I guess, carryable thing. Let's go drop the spear, throw everything else inside there. Equipping the hammer and checking out some more stuff. Uh, we have a shotgun with 15 shells. <laughs> you know what, I'm gonna take it because with this challenge mod, it doesn't really matter if I'm shooting guns because, uh, you know, if a single zombie sees me, it's it's the equivalent of me blasting a shotgun in the middle of Louisville, just with way more accuracy with the zombie location. So does it really matter? No. If this can save my life, we're gonna keep it. I'm also running a nice aiming mod, as you see, which should hopefully help me out quite a bit. Let's see what else we got, though. 
Man, we're actually getting a lot of stuff from here. One of my favorite spots, a screwdriver, creating the trifecta of carpentry, a hand axe, which is a perfect one-handed weapon. And now that we're done with the main house, we have the main attraction, a small trailer that doesn't really look like much up until you realize that it's a meth lab inside. You can even see a nice microscope. And within the meth lab, we have baking soda, a civilian bulletproof vest, might honestly save my life, and it makes me look absolutely goofy. Uh, we have aluminum, a baking tray, a single tub of ice cream. That is the only food I found this entire time. An MC cooking pot, dust, dust mask, and a whole bunch of weaponry. This is why I love drug dens, everyone. We have fire bombs, Molotov cocktails, a Beretta, pipe bombs, M14 magazines. The Beretta, I can't use. I also can't use the Colt. Actually, I can use the Colt, but it's half broken. Okay, you know what? I think the only good things out of this are the bombs, at least for now. We'll take the extra bits of ammo. We'll also take the bombs as well, mainly the pipe bomb, because it has the most explosive reaction. Yes, that's the word for it. But overall, I will say this place was kind of beans, because it is nice that we do have a little bit of food, but it's not enough, and I do think we're gonna have to move to one last spot before I end off this episode. If I check my map, we are currently here. We've cleared it out, we can use it as a base, and I do plan on staying here for the night. But I think in the morning, we are gonna go hop over to the farm homes down this way. This might be a little bit dangerous because there are gonna be more zombies and it's not as remote. But right now, I really don't have much of a choice. So I'm gonna spend the rest of the day searching around for supplies and food. So I will let you know what I find. We got an empty water bottle, which is better than a kettle of water with the weight alone. We also got more tree branches, and honestly, instead of just foraging, I did pick up Foraging Volume 1, so I think I'm gonna read that for the rest of the day, and I will see all of you in the morning. Anyways, welcome to Day 2, and while I was waiting, reading Foraging for Beginners, getting through about half of the book, I did make a bit of a plan for me to follow on my map. Steps for survival, number one, don't die. Number two, find stealthy weapons like crossbows, knives, and other things like that. Number three, find car. Number four, find boat. Number five, profit. Now, of course, there are gonna be a lot more steps in between like fixing up the car, fixing up the boat, but it's a nice general guide for me to survive. So let's go see what we can find all the way up at the farmhouse. I am going to be foraging along the way and I will be watching out for anything that goes bump in the night. But before I do leave, I need some food. We are very hungry, and I'm only gonna continue to get hungrier. So let's go grab the single tub of ice cream we have, and then we can move out. <laughs> I hope you uh, make this one last, Robin. This is gonna be the only food you're gonna have for a while. Yummy, yummy ice cream. By the way, I set food spawns to be pretty low to force me to move out more and to do more exploration. And it's doing the job, because if I would have found like three more tubs of ice cream, I would have been chilling here for at least a full week. But alas, we must keep moving. Oh, also, you might be wondering why I'm actually going through like the middle of the woods to get to my destination, especially when there's a perfectly good road like right up ahead. And the reason is quite simple. There are quite a few zombies that spawn within this area, and usually I wouldn't care, but given how close it is to other homes, I am pretty worried that if I do move down that way, I would incur the wrath of all of the zombies here. So to play it safe, I am gonna be cutting across, hitting up the railroad and moving down that way instead, hopefully circumventing all of the nearby zombies. But along the way, I can check out this small little house here. It's a small cabin, but it might have something that's pretty cool. And it's along the way, so why the hell not? But I would really hope that we find something cooler like weapons, a tent kit, something along the lines of that would be substantially more helpful than a rock. And more importantly, food. Scratch everything I've ever said about weapons, I need food really, really bad. So yeah, give me like an entire head of cabbage if you can. That would really help me out, game. But instead, you give me, um, what is that? Oh, grasshoppers, or crickets. 
That that is tactically food. I'll take that. But boom, we have made it over to the cabin, particularly Ben's cabin. Oh no, there's a zombie here. I'm going to look around. I'm hoping that we're far enough in the middle of nowhere that she's the only one nearby. And you might call me insane for this. I forgot to bring my damn shotgun. By the way, that this window is going to kill me if I go through it. Gosh diggity dang it, you're not giving me a lot of options, game. Because if I, if I were to hop over that right now, I would crawl all the way down to the end, and the chances that she actually just, um, moves around and kills me is very high. I might need to leave this place. Maybe I can hit her in the head with a mug? <laughs> That's really the only plan I have, so hold on, ma'am. I'm gonna pop open this window. It's gonna hurt just a little bit. Ugh. Damn it. Okay, I tried. Yeah, you know what? Instead of going through the windows, because she did see me and I don't see any other commotion, I'm gonna guess she's the only zombie nearby. We're just gonna disassemble the entire door, like remove it from the- Oh, I need a hammer. All right, I have a second idea. We have a stone, we have some tree branches. I'm gonna rip up my tank top here, and we're gonna use that to create a stone hammer so I can disassemble the door. Yeah, we're still cooking, all right? Even though I dropped all of my good weapons back at the drug place, I can equip the stone hammer, equip the screwdriver, and slowly disassemble this bad boy. So, uh, think fast, chuckle butts. Ah. All right. <laughs> the threat has been secured. Oh, that was pretty stressful, but we were able to handle it. And on top of it, it looks like we got ourselves some fishing rods. That is going to be extremely nice, because if you didn't know, there is a nearby fishing hole that I might be able to check out later, which could be a nice source of food. We also got ourselves some rain boots, padded pants, just boots in general, uh, short crossbow bolts, genuinely huge. I might be able to get something working with that later. And inside here, we got a magazine. We do have a wood stove, and this is potentially a future spot for me to go to. But now that we have looted it, all I have to do is make a straight shot down this way, and we should make it to the farm homes. And I walked through a tree, which has made me bleed. You have got to be kidding me. <laughs> Come on, dude, it's a forest. How bad is that gonna f- oh, I'm limping now. This is perfect. Can I sprint? Can I, like, actually, like, full-on sprint? If I can't, I can't sprint. Okay, well, it looks like that entire plan of going to the farmhouse is not going to happen for quite a while. Instead, we're going to just be around the cabin for the rest of the day. It's 2 p.m. Let's look around for food. You have got to be kidding me, dude. Well, I guess I'll see all of you tomorrow and when this, uh, when this cut heals up. Oh no, there's a zombie out here. Why is there a zombie out here as well? What the hell? What is this luck right now, man? What are you doing out here, you little, you little goober? You weren't following me, right? Now I'm gonna have to worry about more zombies around the area. Oh, uh, you know what? It is what it is. We're alive right now. And that's all that matters. Well, I think that's gonna be it when it comes to foraging for today. It is 7 p.m. and I have not found much else. I am a little bit worried about the zombies that lurk within the trees. But I do have a plan, even if I don't have a lighter or another means to start a fire, because I can just move on to the next best thing. If you guys see right here, we got ourselves a small log pile, and what I can do is saw this bad boy up into planks, cutting one plank into bop, 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 a drilled plank, with the last one getting turned into a sturdy stick. With the sturdy sticks and notched wooden plank, I can start a fire. So my plan is to, um, <laughs> is to cook up some, 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 some uncooked bugs. Meat's back on the menu, boys. Eat that up. Oh, that is some good depression right there. But we're not gonna go to sleep that hungry. I'll see all of you tomorrow. <laughs> Anyways, welcome to day two. Technically three with how I counted it before, but on the digital watch, we have survived for one day and 23 hours. So it's about two days, two zombies killed for good reason, and I have reached level two in foraging. Today is going to be the big day. I actually move over to the farmhouse because my foot wound has finally healed, which means I could run, 
Just, I, it's still, it's still, it's still scratched actually, never mind. But I can run normally, so it's healed up enough for me to move around all, all graceful like. Oh, and here's the road. We have finally made it over. And if I follow this dirt path right down here, we should make it to the farmhouse. So if one zombie sees me, every single zombie within a hundred tiles sees me as well, meaning that it's going to be a fight. So even if there are like 12 zombies within the area, I'm going to have to fight all 12 in one go. So my plan right now is to attract one of the zombies within the farmhouse, drop the tote bag, and equip the crowbar so I can deal with them with a little bit of fence cheese, because I am decent at fighting sprinter zombies, so it's not the end of the world. I just need to take a few steps back and to plan stuff out properly in order to survive this challenge. But boom, we've made it to the farmhouse. Oh, am I glad to see this place. So before I go any further, we are going to drop off our little tote bag. Hopefully I can do this without attracting too much attention, but you're, you know, it, it, it's going to be a work in progress. I have an idea. We're going to shout a little bit. That should bring her to the window. That was very close. Okay, I'm going to hop in now. She doesn't know I'm here. We're going to pull out our screwdriver. This is very dangerous. And we're going to... She broke through the... Don't move. Ugh! Okay. Did the others hear me? They did. Quite a few did, it seems. Well, that's why uh, I got the fence line on my end. Let's go head outside before I get absolutely swarmed from the north. <laughs> oh, damn. The shed zombie. That was where he was coming from. I was not expecting that at all, but bingo, that's another one dead. Let's keep our eyes out and let's speed up time very slowly to make sure that's going to be it for today. And it does seem like it. Okay, well, we have secured the farmhouse. Also, give me those high top sneakers. Those are extremely nice. Hell yeah, looking good, Robin, looking good. All right, I am going to go look around the Ooh. A sniper rifle, you say? Well, 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 I mean, it is a pretty loud rifle. But the thing with this is that it's also a hunting rifle, so I could load this up and really snipe zombies out from afar. That's pretty damn good. We also got ourselves some pillows, a word search magazine, absolutely no food aside from a single water bottle. Painkillers, tweezers, also useful. Magazines, even more supplies, including a bobby pin and a sewing kit. The bobby pin might be nice. Actually, it is extremely nice because that allows me to pick lock some doors open without making too much noise. We got books. And lastly, we got ourselves a pen. Overall, not that good. I was really hoping for some food, but what I can do next episode is forage through the farm field right down that way, and the chances that I get something are extremely high. Also, that zombie is extremely close to me. God diggity damn it. So I've shot the gun and I've also attracted the zombie up here, huh? <laughs> oh, okay, come up. You already know where the hell I'm at, man. Come on. It's, it's, it's not, it's not rocket science. And he got stuck up on the front door. Man, zombies are weird. Well, I'm going to jump down as well then. And I'm just going to pull out the hunting rifle once again because I really don't want more to trickle in. Plus, it'll kind of show you how cool this mod is. But if I take my time, aim, and let the cursor actually move onto the zombie, I can hit him right in the head. No problems. Dispatched without him hearing a damn thing. Anyways, I think I'm going to end the episode here. If you guys have liked this episode, be sure to like, favorite, share, and subscribe for more. I have no idea how well Robin's journey is going to go. Honestly, we're probably going to die next episode, but hey, that is to be determined. I will see all of you next time. Peace out, everyone.